I am Dracula. A moment ago, I stumbled upon a most amazing phenomenon. Dracula. The very mention of the name brings to mind things so evil, so fantastic, so degrading. You wonder if it isn't all a dream, a nightmare. What? Millions of them. But no, this is no dream. This is Dracula, the original terrifying story of a maniac and a man who lived after death, lived on human blood, took the form of a vampire bat. Dracula. A. D. N. It's headphones nailed! What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host, as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you the last for now in my list of old movies that I've been watching. So it started with Plan 9 from Outer Space, and then um, the last review for the 1927 film Metropolis. So for this review, I'm going to do a quick review for the 1931 film Dracula. So while watching Metropolis and just thinking about the performance of Bela Lugosi in uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space or lack thereof, it made me want to watch Dracula again because I generally had a positive um, memory and vibe of the film. So I wanted to give it a, another watch and a little, with a little bit more of a critical eye to see how it held up, um, see if it is something that, that I still enjoy. Was it good? Is it something that people would generally have a positive um, memory of? And I want to say overall it was, or and it, it still is a very good film for its time. So the opening scene, for example, sets up a good film as far as the lore of Dracula, the general superstition surrounding him, and the castle and all of that, and why Reinfeld sh or Reinf Renfield shouldn't go there. So that was all good stuff. Um, even the acting and the random close-up of the guy that Renfield was talking to who told him not to go there and telling him about the basic lore. So um, that was a good starting scene. And then with the opening introduction to Dracula in his castle I thought was probably the best um, part of Dracula's performance. Um, granted all of it was actually really good but um, this opening sequence really set him up very well as being an ominous figure and I liked the way he delivered the speech about the wolves being children of the night and the beautiful music or something like that and talking about the spiders um, it was very creepy and it's for me, it provided a good baseline as far as having a, um, basically his accent and the kind of performance we're going to get out of Lugosi in this film. So with that being said, to summarize that point, I think Dracula or Bella Lugosi as Dracula really sold the point or really sold the part in this movie. So without that or any other accent now feels like it would not have been as good of a performance. Um, and then as far as attention to details in the film, so I did like the bats in um, the window scene. So it was probably just someone holding, you know, a piece of paper that folded up like a, a bat and sticking it on a stick and moving it up and down to make it look like that. And then sticking it in the dark and all that. Um, I'm kind of glad they didn't have a scene with maybe a dog dressed up as a wolf or maybe a wolf scene in the dark or something like that. Yes, I would want to see that, but not having that um, work just as well as far as um, he, just hearing their sound and people running outside to um, hear what the noise is. Um, to that end, as far as when um, Dracula first meets Van Helsing, I liked the scene with the mirror in the cigarette case. So when um, Van Helsing is realizing um, some of the fiction around Dracula might not be all fiction. I liked his test to see um, if that was indeed the case. So all of that was pretty good. And then I liked um, 
And then as far as being a henchman style character, Reinfeld as um, being under the control of Dracula is good in that his performance in the Asylum was very Joker-ish. So if you think, and I want to say for its time, it was uh, along the level of how Mark Hamill plays Joker now in the animated films. So granted at the time we didn't have a Joker and this was probably a, as good a performance as we would get, but watching Reinfeld now reminded very much that if he was to be an actor now, he would be in the running to play a good Joker, or even in the Adam West era of um, Batman, he could have played Joker in that time. Um, and then as a bit, and then coming off of the recent watching of Mortal Kombat, uh, when Dracula tells Reinfeld, or he's trying to control Van Helsing and have him get, uh, get to him, he keeps saying, come here, and he tries to use his mind power arm trick on him. After the second or third time, I was kind of hoping that Dracula would kind I, I mean, I didn't, want, I didn't want Dracula to lose his cool, but I also kind of wanted him to lose his cool so that he, would, he could say, get over here like Scorpion, which is kind of a silly thought, and I think that they handle the scene very well um, to keep Dracula in character and um, keep his he, he is sure of his powers but he still doesn't lose his cool even when his powers don't work and even when Van Helsing opens the mirror on him and when he's holding the cross and all of that so Van Helsing proves himself to be on near equal footing to Dracula and Dracula even makes note that for a man who's not even lived one lifetime he has a lot of wisdom so little things like that make the movie very very good um and then by the end of the movie when we get to see the when we get to see Carfax Carthax or Carfax Abbey that and thinking back on the castle in Transylvania that we saw at the opening of the film was very Castlevania like so if you've played the video games or you've seen the Netflix animated show then the castles were actually very well done even though they only we only saw bits and pieces of them you could it did a very good job of capturing the scope of the um, castles, which I liked. So if they ever do a remake of the film, I know we would, or a proper remake. I know there have been a few films since then, but I kind of want a remake of this particular version of the film, but with modern graphics in color and a little bit more of an exploration of the castles and maybe um, a little bit of backstory of maybe looking back to when the castle uh, Dracula and um, his castle in Transylvania were in its heyday to have more people in it to have that compare and contrast for why Dracula wants to move to Carfax, Carthax, Carthax, or basically why he wants to move to London. Um, so finally, the final point that I want to make about the film is that throughout the film, granted it's, only, it's less than an hour and a half, or right at an hour and a half, but I was wondering why the film seemed very ominous, a little bit eerie, and generally very well done. And is, I think the reason for that is overall, aside from the opening to the film, when we have the title sequences and the cards, there's no background music in the movie. It's just the people talking. It's the uh, uh, wolves howling in the background. It's the bats flying in the sky, the people talking, and things like that. So not having background music lends itself very well in this film and generally just makes the film that much more um, eerie and uneasy. The conversation is not necessarily light but it's very tight and very direct, very focused and to the point there's very little wasted time or energy in the film on unnecessary items. It's smooth transitions from one scene to the next even though there are, aren't any cutscenes or fadeaways or things like that that I noticed. Um, and all in all, it's just one scene after another. The progression from one event to the next generally works. And overall, if you're like when you're getting to see, to think that, OK, well, I wonder if they're going to talk about this next. Sure enough, within a few scenes, they talk about it. So at an hour and 15 hour, 20 minutes, the movie is very good it conveys everything that needs to be conveyed you get that ominousness and eeriness out of dracula 
you're convinced that Reinfeld believes that Dracula is going to have his way and that it's not safe for Mina or anything like that. You get the ominous or the overbearing and proud presence of Dracula when he's at the opera, when he's talking to Mina and her friend and all of that stuff. So overall, if I was to grade the film, I would give it a, about a grade of a, a minus to a B plus. Overall, it was pretty good and it left me wanting more. There's very little that I want to say negative about the film. Um, if anything, I'd probably say that I want, I would want a little bit more, maybe. Um, I, but there's not really anything I can say that was missing from the film because adding anything would take away from other parts of the film. But like I said, I'd probably want something at like the beginning of the film to establish Dracula as his, as the, um, the character that he is, or put a flashback in the middle of the film, like when he's maybe talking to Van Helsing, or maybe when Van Helsing is talking to the other professors that they he t when they're when they're talking to each other in the library that Van Helsing talks about an era when there was a, the fi the fictional story that he believes in that he's been able to trace through the years about Dracula himself so when he gets to the point of meeting Dracula and is testing the various things to, to see if Dracula is really who he thinks he that who Van Helsing thinks he is that that's kind of the baseline he uses for that to make that connection so that's probably really the only thing that I would maybe say is missing from the film. Um, but it doesn't take away from the film by not having it there. So like I said, about a solid B plus A minus, I get like right around that 90% range. Um, and if you look on uh, Rotten Tomatoes, it has a critic score of 94% with an audience score of 81%. So very well favored. Um, so the other thing I'm hoping for, neither here nor there, is that I'm kind of hoping that they find maybe the original negatives or the film of the movie and they're able to uh, upconvert it to maybe remove some of the noise, clean up the audio. Um, and maybe provide a 4K upscaling or even a t an HD 1080p version of the film that's cleaned up with less of a noise and better audio quality. But for what it is, it's probably right around that 720p, maybe 480p quality. So it's not bad, but it wouldn't hurt to maybe see a cleaned up version of the film or if somebody makes a cleaned up version of the film to denoise it to make it look a little bit sharper that would be great and of course maybe colorize it along the lines of um uh, like plan nine from outer space um and it's a bit of comparison so um dracula came out in 1931 plan nine as i um look it up See, Plan 9 from Out Outer Space came out in 1957, so I guess a matter of about 26 years. So they probably don't have a color version of it, but it would be nice to maybe get it colorized so that we can maybe see a little bit more of the dramatic um, effect of um, the film and some of those shots, like the opening shots of the Carpathian Mountains. Um, some of the set designs and stuff like that. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, thoughts on the movie or any past review, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is HeadphonesNail.Reviews for past episodes, subscription links supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. So with that, the next bit of a review is going to be a TV show review in the form of the of seasons four and five of Gotham. So I have seen the first three seasons and it kind of fell off for me. And this is something that patrons already know about, but um, I fell off for me just because it started feeling kind of repetitive. But since I saw that the show is streaming on Netflix, I thought I would give the final two seasons a watch to see how the show ended and give a quick review of that. And generally just see how the show um, pans out by the end of it. Um, and then otherwise, I've started the game play for Red Dead, Re Red Dead Redemption 2 on Google Stadia. So I played about an hour of it. So I'm going to continue playing that shortly. I did want to take a break from playing a little bit with due to like longer hours at work and all that. So just taking a break from video games. But 
um, I will start playing that a little bit more as well. Um, so that's all there is for this particular review. So thanks for tuning in, supporting the show, listening, tuning in, sharing the content wherever possible, and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning in, and until next time.